So, um, yeah, uh, I would encourage you to open your camera so that we can see your face. Um, and we have uh, uh, put, uh, put on our practical tips in our website about the collaboration session and also the conference session. And then this event is recorded. And then um, we, after the event, it will last for about uh, 45 minutes. And then after the events, uh, we hopefully can encourage you to stay behind, to have a chat, uh, to have some kinds of networking. And then, uh, yes, as I said, all together we will have uh, 45 minutes for the event. So maybe let's begin. We will have uh, William firstly to present about the Teams and also the Zoom function is the conference in tools. Okay, pass it to you, William. Thank you, Don. Um, Welcome everybody. Uh, really a uh, very good opportunity to meet you guys uh, after a, a really long quiet period uh, for KMB under the pandemic. Uh, it's really a, a we, we were in such a panic uh, at, the, at the beginning of this year when 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 we were hit by by the coronavirus. Uh, at that moment, that everything stopped and uh, uh, we were locked down. Uh, uh, away from work and but at the at the same time uh, I'm, a, I'm an engineer but I'm I'm in a service industry that uh, I have to meet my clients so at that moment we start to learn uh, different uh, collaboration tools uh, I'm going to introduce you uh, the two very popular tools that we have we're using today uh, which is Zoom and Microsoft uh, team uh, actually, I know you will be you will be a lot more familiar than I do. So some some people will be more familiar than I do. Sorry, I think the slide is. Uh, 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 some some of you may be really familiar with these tools more than I do. But uh, I'm going to introduce some uh, features and also uh, a point of view uh, under the business context. Uh, which one uh, would be preferred and which one is better. Uh, if you search on the web, you will see a lot of uh, uh, comparison table like this one. Uh, I try to use uh, this one from the university so that uh, we can uh, 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 avoid some bias uh, on, on, on which one is better. But uh, the, the feature of Zoom and Team are very much uh, uh, similar. And uh, you can see this at uh, the polling function, the sharing screen, but uh, the, the fake out rooms for, for team is, is not available. Uh, moving on, uh, there are some managing students in the class. This one is uh, another, another group, another cluster of functions that uh, Zoom and team share. And uh, you can see uh, team is missing some function in managing student video. And uh, for the administrative related feature, you can see uh, Microsoft Team is, is, is really not delivering. Uh, so in the, in the academic area, that uh, we, we can see Zoom is more popular in, in this uh, area. And, uh, but personally, uh, for me, I work in a company which we have a, a whole package of Microsoft uh, products. So I'm, uh, for myself, I am really engaged with the uh, Microsoft team, uh, uh, Microsoft team in my daily work. So uh, this one, you can see a screen capture. I like this really much, the, the chat box, the, the chat. This one uh, on, on the left hand side, this one is uh, like uh, 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 um, uh, WhatsApp group that you can repeatedly uh, go into these uh, different uh, meeting rooms that you can uh, uh, and join the uh, uh, Google to attend different meeting uh, with your with your teammates, and uh, you can see on the left hand side here that um, this one uh, is a capture at the global engineering webinar. I'm an engineer, so global engineering webinar. That uh, we have uh, 125 people. That uh, the the meeting is really running really smooth. So. Uh, uh, for a daily operation uh, in the company context, like like we uh, we have uh, the whole bunch of uh, surrounded by a whole bunch of Microsoft products. Team is really a great tool. It, uh, it's it's not it's not perfect, but uh, it's satisfying. 
And uh, this one, you can see that uh, uh, besides th those features that we have mentioned, uh, here is some new features coming. Uh, both Zoom and Microsoft Teams, they are evolving. This one is a Zoom, uh, uh, a Zoom meeting I just captured recently. But uh, the, the speaker is in front of the uh, uh, is, is in front of the PowerPoint, so uh, he is part of the presentation in this in this uh, 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 example. And this one I like the most. Uh, this is a new feature in the Microsoft Team. Uh, you can you can doodle on the on the whiteboard. So this is what I've doodled when I when I figure out this new feature. So. Both products are, are really they're evolving with more more and more new features. So, which one is better? You can find many comparison on the on the internet like this one. Microsoft uh, no Zoom is better, and for this one it says Microsoft with integration with the whole bunch of uh, um, products that it is better than Zoom. Um, but for this one, we can see this is a capture of the email in my company, uh, in the company I'm working in, that um, there is a Roma uh, about Zoom that uh, there's the uh, security issue with this, with, with, with this uh, tool that uh, says uh, that there's some uh, server located in China. Um, this company I'm working in, that they are skeptical about this Roma, and they send out this email and say uh, we we are not going to use uh, the, the the Zoom function in our company. But anyway, we can still use the browser to 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 communicate with our clients. But we see there's the skeptic uh, about this too, uh, due to the security issue. But after all, uh, as uh, in the in the business world, I prefer this um, this point of view the most. That uh, the Zoom is uh, to be is more attractive uh, uh, for the video first culture. That uh, when I need to meet my client, when I need to um, discuss with with the, the people I'm working working with, that I would say Zoom is the is is the is a better option. Than Microsoft Team, uh, because this one we can just uh, with the hit and run uh, uh, a mentality that we can just go and and without any um, subscription or any login we can just go there and open, and enter into a meeting uh, to to meet my clients. So uh, soon after all, uh, without a, a concrete that evidence that said that. The, the security the security is really an issue that I would say Michael uh, I would say Zoom is the better option in the in the business environment. So um, that's all for the team and Microsoft comparison. I was I was uh, that's all for my part and over to you, Kea, for more uh, for more about the Google tools, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, William. And uh, next, I'm going to share with you about uh, Google Meet, <laughs> uh, our, our big brother, Google. Um, I'm going to present this one from uh, uh, our website instead of from a point. I hope that will bring you some uh, new experience. So this is our new website. Uh, the address is a uh, .kmp hk You can feel free to come in here. So you click in the articles at the bottom. So this is what I'm going to uh, talk about now. Uh, Google, and actually, as you know, uh, uh, Google also bought uh, YouTube. And there are different tools from Google, from YouTube. Uh, and like, for example, the Google Hangouts everything. And Google Meet actually has evolved recently. I mean, it's not new, but uh, in the last few months, I think around uh, June, it has actually announced a lot of new features. In fact, it's, uh, it is to my surprise that some of the features are pretty good. Uh, so I want to give uh, a short introduction of uh, what they have done. Uh, from, I think, around June until like October, uh, uh, November, they, they have a series of uh, uh, features coming out. So 
first of all, they uh, integrate very well with uh, Google Calendar. So when you go into Google Calendar, you can actually schedule uh, a Google Meet meeting, an online meeting, not necessarily from the Google Meet, but from your calendar. And that actually gives you uh, some advantage because you can actually through your calendar automatically go in, goes into your calendar and you can invite your guests from the calendar. So that's very neat. The second thing is uh, a phone dial in. I don't know whether you guys have this experience before. Uh, many years ago, I was actually involved in a lot of international uh, organization where we always have uh, 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 meetings. And uh, we tried to use at that time where it was mainly on Skype or some similar tools. But there's always a problem. The connection is not very good and then we are traveling. So one of the features which actually is very necessary is when you don't have a data connection, uh, phone dial in is very important. So to stay connected with the company, with the team, and Google Meet actually has this dial in uh, feature as well. And what's important is the dial in, in the past, most of the dial in, they don't have a Hong Kong number. Now, Google Meet, they come with a Hong Kong number, a local Hong Kong number, so you don't have to pay IDD to join the call. Uh, but this feature for the Hong Kong local dial-in is only applicable for the G Street accounts, which means that they have a pay account. So most people are, are using right now Zoom, and I, I, I presume, and Zoom is one of the uh, most common online meeting tools nowadays. And one of the thing, good things about Zoom is, is that there is a virtual background, like the one I'm having right now. At the back is a picture of my office. <laughs> so uh, it seems that a lot of people like this virtual background. And, and Google Meet also have these features too. So in fact, apart from the, the uh, virtual background, they also have uh, a blur result. So instead of using a background, you can actually blur your own background, which is kind of new. Jamboard. Jamboard is, by, is from Google and it's free of charge. And it's, it is actually a digital whiteboard. And in fact, it is a, a, a very nice tool. Uh, in fact, I have seen people using it not just for the purpose of uh, writing on the on, on the sheet together, but they also use it as a tool for other purposes, which makes collaboration really nice. Uh, how to use it? I'm not going to spend time right now to talk about this. And uh, I think I might, I, I'll, I, our colleague will talk more uh, when they come to his terms. So if you want to know more, here is a, is a link. If you come to the page, click on this link, we'll tell you more about this. And with Google Meet, and both of them are from uh, Google, so actually Google Meet integrate very well with uh, Jamboard. Jamboard is actually quite famous now in the online corporation. Chat, and of course, uh, uh, similar to all other to uh, online tools, uh, Google Meet also have a, a chat window. In fact, it's quite nice. But, but the difference is in the chat window of Google Meet, you do not have private message. Every message on the chat window is, is, is seen by all the participants. So there's no private chat. File attachment, this is another one which I like very much. When you schedule a meeting through the Google Calendar, for example, in the Google Calendar, you can actually pre-upload a file which is going to be shared by all the participants. And if you do that, and this file that you share on the, on the Google Calendar event, automatically will appear here. So the people who will participate in the, in the Google Meet meeting, they will at the same time get access to all these uh, documents that you uh, pre-uploaded. And that, and in, in, in a lot of cases, for example, you want to distribute your uh, meeting agenda uh, or the, uh, the lecture notes, things like this. These are very useful. Captions. So 
This is something we need. I think it's good for education. I remember when I was young, and when I was listening to the teacher, my English was very poor. I I can only catch like fifty percent was of what he's talking about. Now with this picture,、uh, Google Meet we can do a real time translation of、uh, the the language into a text and display in your window automatically. It's free of charge. So, uh, uh, but right now it supports only English. But this is very nice. So there's a、uh, camera views.、Uh, actually, they have like different modes of、uh, different views, view modes,、uh, to display the participant in different style, and it actually can display up to forty five, forty forty nine participant at the same time. But of course, one thing to remind you: when you、uh, actually open up all this, you actually、uh, tend to、uh, consume more data. More data、uh, uh, for for the zooms or for the、uh, online session, so you have to pay attention to the bandwidth you have in your online connection. Breakout rooms, and of course,、uh, same as all the other、uh, zoom、uh, or、uh, zoom or team or other tools, they also have a, a, a avail available a breakout room. But this breakout room feature is only available for a paid version in the G Suite Enterprise, or、uh, the education version too. I think. Okay, so these all these actually are some very nice feature from、uh, Google Meet, and and then when you use Google Meet, actually it operate out、uh, using the、uh, the browser, and very likely most people are using Chrome. So I like to introduce a a tools called Duelist. It's it's actually a a a tools a, a extension on the Chrome browser to help you to split the screen into half, like the left and the right, and then in different ratios. So this is something you might want to look into. It's free of charge. You know, you can try it out.、Uh, if you are interested in the Google Meet, here you can come to this page and then this the there here is a thirteen minute video. You can play this video and you give it a quick start. It's very nice. So this is、uh, about uh, the the、uh, short introduction about Google Meet and how it has evolved recently on the new features that may be of interest to you guys. So apart from this, I also like to、uh, introduce a lot, a little bit,、uh, some of other tools which you may need when you do online meetings.、Uh, for Zoom. There are some new features come、uh, which has come out recently. You know, I think in recent、uh, two to three months, if you come in here, you can see actually quite some some quite nice feature. Which, but you you need to download the newest version of the Zoom software in order to use it. So this is another nice things.、Um, if you are a participant. In the online meeting, this file is easy to operate. But if you are a speaker or you are the organizer, then the whole thing is actually very complicated. So this is a nice tool which I'm using right now. It's like a control panel on my side, but runs on an iPad. And this is my the panel on my side right now. So we can see my cursor right now, and I can turn it on, off. Just like that, with on the panel, it's very fast. So this is something you know. I I think、uh, very nice if you are the organizer or you are the host. And if you are in the teaching or education, then this is an area you might want to look into. Uh, so this a、uh, a a video to give you a good start. You know, focus on teaching. And this is a. A, a short video telling you how to work out this uh, uh, this uh, we call it the cursor highlight,、uh, which actually so make your audience can also see the cursor clearly. So when you are in a in a online meeting,、uh, especially when you are the speaker or the host, so like what I'm doing right now, I have two screens set up so that you know I can see what you see. Uh, but that will cause a problem because that will cause an echo. 
And it is, if you want to eliminate the echo, this is the area you want to look into. And, and, and then another one is, uh, have you ever think about how many screens are there when you are doing a Zoom meeting? And this is an information for you. And when you want to organize the online event, in fact, it's unbelievably a lot of problem you have to look into, and there are some tips. So this is all about it and uh, what I want to present tonight. So uh, thank you very much. So I think I'll pass one of the next speaker. Yep, thank you, KF. This is Don. Uh, I think uh, KF has uh, uh, put so many practical tips in the um, uh, KMP website. Uh, if you're interested later on, you can go browse so that you can capture some of the practical tips and then for your uh, later planning or execution as well. So for my part, uh, actually, I can summarize that uh, the, the one which is by KF and also William is about the conferencing tools, just like a team, uh, Zoom and also the Google Meet. But for my part is that uh, actually we can make use of some uh, tools for some kinds of um uh, interaction. Uh, actually, we'll uh, uh, suggest three, uh, but I think that is, uh, we should have a disclaimer today. We are not going to do some kinds of effort uh, advertising. We are just left out some of the uh, popular interaction tools, conferencing tools for your own use. Okay, I will share the PowerPoint to you later. Okay, so uh, for my part is the event interaction tools. Actually, I will introduce two kinds of tools. The first one is the event interaction tools. And then the second one, it is the collaboration tools. And then the, the most difference here is when you are going to engage your participants, actually there will be some kinds of survey, multiple choice or the competition just like the, uh, by Kahoot. Okay, so that we can borrow the concept of gamification. So uh, to some of the people that uh, they may not know well about the uh, event interaction tools, I can suggest, uh, uh, give you some hints. The first one is about the word cloud. Say for example, if you want to gather the feedback in one word about the event today, so the people may voice out, okay, trends or advertising or marketing trends. Then uh, the more the people vote or suggest that you will go larger is the word cloud. And then the second function, maybe just like uh, this one, we have uh, some multiple choices and then they can voice out their, uh, their, their answer. And then if they answer correctly and with a short time limit, they will score higher, just like raw note here, okay? If it is not that, uh, if you can see the word here. And then for the e event interaction tools, actually it can have some kinds of a survey, uh, just like the bar chart or the pie chart, uh, pie chart and bar chart, and so that you can have uh, some of the uh, uh, um, a glimpse about the questions, and then you can uh, get the feeling about the event today, you can uh, have them to, to rate the event today, just like this one. Uh, actually, commonly, all those functions can be found in the event interaction tools. But nowadays, maybe today, we will just let out three of them for your consideration in, the, in, the, in your plan. Uh, the first one will be the, uh, we will introduce about the poll everyone, uh, pro, poll everywhere. And then the second one will be the uh, Mentimeter. Yep. And then the third one will be the slide view. Okay. So uh, we will have a few types of tools. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And then uh, we'll have uh, three tools. Uh, the first one, second one, and the third one. We I will list out some of the special features about the tools. For the poll everyone, uh, poll everywhere, as you can see, we can ask the people a question, which is, okay, where are you from? And then when they click 
about okay, I'm uh, coming from London or coming from Hong Kong, coming from China or every part of the world, they can click on the pictures. Then they will show a mask or location mask over there. Then we can have uh, visualize uh, uh, what mostly the people are coming from in this event. So, uh, and then the second one, it is uh, so special about the poll everywhere is that actually you can key in the answer by test, I mean by the messaging. Okay, just like here, okay, I test to this number and then to key in some of the cook here and then to key in the uh, my option. Okay, uh, just like I uh, say, for example, I'm doing some multiple choices here and then uh, they will show the result. So it is uh, the, the special thing about the poll everywhere. This is the first uh, event collaboration tools, uh, event interaction tools. And then the second one, it is the Mentimeter. Uh, actually, they can also use uh, some kinds of uh, multiple choice, uh, say for example, what is your agenda? And then um, say for example, we have uh, two people and then one may say that I'm a male and then I'm a female. And then for the second questions, okay, feel good today. Uh, we have uh, three options, not really, and quite good and love along. Okay, if they choose quite good, but actually they can combine the answer together with the first question, what is your agenda and do some kinds of segmentation. Okay, so uh, when you are launching uh, some of the competition or multiple choice uh, for your uh, for your participants, which may come from different functions, actually you can visualize the segmentation very well here by Mentimeter. Uh, actually, the poll everywhere can have the same function, but not for the slide. Okay. So uh, one special feature about the Mentimeter is that, okay, as you see here is an icon. Uh, yeah, that is the questions. Okay. If your participants have some questions over the slide. Actually, they can have the question particularly for uh, a specific slide. Yeah, so uh, say for example, I have a questions for this slide about to feel good today. Then they can ask the question for this particular slide. Actually, it is the a specific function for Mentimeters, but not the slider and also, but not for the poll everywhere. So it is so special about the Mentimeters. And then another special thing is that, okay, uh, if you're familiar with the event interaction tools, um, actually uh, when the owner or the moderator uh, say that, okay, uh, I need your feedback, and then uh, then the, the, the participants can have their uh, feedback uh, and therefore uh, their interaction for a particular slide. But actually they can choose to their own audience pace, audience pace. That means that uh, they can go to you know, that slide to have some kinds of feedback uh, uh, for some of the answer, but not according to the presenter mode as well. And the thirdly, it is about the slide. Uh, for slide, I think uh, among these three, uh, uh, the, the it is artistic and then uh, it can have allowed you to have uh, feedback in the, the polls or some of the interaction and also they can have some of the questions here. Uh, but one of the good things about Slido is the integration. That means if you are going to integrate the slide into Google Slide or the PowerPoint, actually Slido can do so. So uh, these are the, some of the specific functions for Slido, Mentimeters, and also the poll everywhere. As I said, uh, we should have a disclaimer, uh, not for selling you mm -hmm. about uh, the, the, the tools, but actually you can go browse for each of the event interactions to later. So I think uh, uh, no matter what purpose you are going, have, going to have, uh, these three tools can, can, can have a values. But later on, I will share about the collaboration tools. What is the, so special about the collaboration tools is that because I'm coming from the people development, uh, some of the facilitation session uh, is moved from the classroom into the virtual session. So uh, if you are just going to have uh, interaction just by the slide you may need to support everyone, it is not that good enough. So we need to have the collaboration tools just like the Jamboard or 
uh, set by KF. Uh, one of the good thing about the uh, Jamboard is that, okay, when you have some kinds of um, a memo paper, actually the participants can have the memo paper and put down their comments over there. But uh, actually they can also do some of the doodle or some of the writing the object. When I write this kind of object, this is a bicycle, but uh, Google, you know that they have a good AI, uh, artificial intelligence, they can suggest you what do you mean by this object? So they will suggest you, is that uh, this bicycle or that bicycle or that bicycle? Okay, so uh, it is doing some kind of AI that uh, to make your drawing into a better way. Okay, but not just about the drawing, but also the words as well. When you say that uh, good to see you, and, and then they will actually to turn into a good looking test. So I think uh, this is so special about the Google Jambo. But uh, later on, I will also introduce you to more. The first one is called Muro, and then the third one is called Miro. Uh, for Muro, uh, when you see that, okay, we can have so many uh, Nemo paper, and then you will see that there are so many cursor here. When we have uh, 10 people all together, they will have 10 cursor. Uh, representing each of the participants. When they click on this paper, and then the cursor will move that way. And so the, the, it will give you the hints about what is the participant focusing on. And then you can do some of the voting. Uh, say, for example, what is so important about uh, the, the, the changes nowadays, maybe say a cultural transformation. The 26 people may voice out that it is so crucial and 24 participants may say that employee engagement is so important, so on. And it is the special thing about Mural. And then the final one is the Miro. Okay, Muro and Miro are similar, but uh, the thing is so special about the Miro is that they have so many templates here. You can adopt, you can make use of the sticky pack, uh, weekly agenda, two plus uh, two, two times two prioritization matrix. And then the special one is that actually it can incorporate the conferencing tools into this board. So later on, I will show you the Miro demonstration, but actually it is a movie. So hopefully you will enjoy. So let me see. Thanks for joining the Miro demonstration. Uh, today we'll make use of the templates that is already inbuilt in the Miro system. As you see in the templates library, there are a Kanban framework, mind map, user story map framework, and some others. When you scroll down, there are 20 or 30 of them. But today we'll pick uh, the one which is called Sticky Packs. When you open, uh, you will find that there are six packs of uh, the memo paper, each with different uh, color uh, that may represent the six people. But uh, if you like to engage more participants, actually you can open more packs and also adjust the color according to your own needs. Uh, and uh, the first thing is uh, to, to engage or to, to have a collaboration, collaboration session is uh, we need to have a white space and then we set the topic uh, which is called uh, what inspire you the most today. And then later on, the participants can drag the memo paper onto it and also leave their ideas or opinion over the topic. Say for example, for the first one is, uh, uh, okay, Mentimeter function inspire us the most. And then we may say that uh, the Zoom and Teams function inspire us the most. And also we can um, leave other comments as well. So if there are many participants participating in this uh, drag and drop and also adding the comments uh, together, you may find that uh, uh, it is very amazing. There are so many memo paper floating around. So next, 
if you find that uh, there is a gas painter which is the green cursor it is moving because I'm logging in uh, by my iPhone as one of the participants as well so when the cursor is moving that means I have some movement or I have some action uh, to, to engage in this collaboration session as well maybe we can type in the purpose of the virtual training a uh, virtual event today or uh, inspire me a lot and then the slide function may inspire me a lot as well so after this we can have the voting function okay the voting function will we give it a name uh, which is called best idea today then we set the duration to be five minutes and then the, there will be a free votes per person then uh, the participants can only vote for the sticky notes but not the others so we uh, uncheck the uh, boss then we can pick the one um, pick the sticky notes that uh, uh, inspire you the most uh, we, you have only three votes uh, actually we, we, we should leave some time for our participants to get familiar with the voting function so but uh, if they all finish then we can uh, shorten the duration and then we can end the vote uh, earlier than five minutes so uh, when you do so after that you can uh, end the voting for all and the system will calculate um, which memo paper can gain most of the votes today so when you see the result today maybe the mentimeter function inspire you the most okay when you see mario and also my face that means for miro it can integrate both the conferencing tools just like zoom and teams and together with the the miro board so uh, it can make the more engaging and also wonderful experience with the participants but bear in mind that uh, for ipad i think uh, it seems not supporting this kind of function it allows me to use the browser to do so so better for you uh, you may uh, resort to the desktop to do so okay so <coughs> that is about the collaboration tools and also the event interaction tools uh, uh, I have uh, made use of uh, Miro before but not that intensive but uh, for the event interaction tools I use it quite a lot and then uh, uh, just my experience is that, that those people in the Southeast Asia are quite familiar with the uh, collaboration tools just like the Miro and Muro they are so similar but I think uh, one of the tips is that uh, Muro is a little bit fancy and then it will be more cute to using it. So if you want to know it more, you can browse to the practical tips in the website later on. Okay, so next we'll pass to Andres to, uh, to, to give me some of the hints about the purpose of the virtual training. Okay, thank you, Andres. Thank you very much, Don, and uh, good evening to everyone. I do realize that we are running a little uh, over schedule, so I will try and keep my part down to a minimum. Um, so I would just want to share with you some of my experiences um, with using uh, uh, pr primarily Zoom, um, but this would apply to any um, uh, uh, online uh, you know, meeting meeting software. Um, I've used this obviously in in business meetings. Um, this is uh, the main function uh, of the software, especially Zoom. It's based around um, uh, business uh, business meetings. Um, I've also used it for more casual meetings. Um, you know, just get-togethers and chatting. Um, I've used it for teaching adults. Um, Teaching is very different from a uh, business meeting because there's a lot less collaboration. Um, the expectation is very different. Um, and of course, I've also used it for teaching uh, young students, um, for which I must admit, um, although Zoom is the most popular, it is the uh, least appropriate uh, platform, I would say, for, for teaching youngsters because uh, simply the, the tools are um, 
uh, very open-ended. Uh, you, you're allowed a lot of freedom as a viewer. Um, and, you know, um, kids like to muck about. And you need to know uh, exactly what, uh, uh, you know, they can do and what they can't do and how to stop them. So uh, let's just uh, uh, see what the difference is between an online uh, presentation or an online uh, meeting than from a, a normal meeting. Um, of course, they're very different uh, when you're, you're teaching or, or when you're presenting online. Um, the major difference is, of course, that um, th there is no interaction with, with the audience or very little interaction with the audience in terms of eye contact. Um, at the moment, I'm staring at uh, a little uh, dot in the middle of, at the top of my computer, um, and I really don't know, you know, how you guys are feeling, if you are bored, if you are disinterested, um, if you're confused. Um, I have no, no way to, to judge that. So there's no feedback from the audience. Um, I, yeah, as I say, there's no, there's no way to get any visual rapport uh, or you know, visual feedback or any rapport from the, from the audience. It's also a little more difficult to, to take questions. Um, I see that there's uh, someone's written in the chat, but because I'm presenting, I really can't spend the time to look at the chat. Um, do you also realize that when you are uh, using Zoom that you have no control over how the audience views um, your presentation or, or, or what you're doing? Um, if they're on uh, a computer, if they're on an iPhone uh, or a mobile phone, I should say, or um, uh, an, um, you know, a tablet, um, they all can see different things in different ways, um, which can be quite quite, uh, um, yeah, you have no control over that, so, um, and they may be asking questions about that. Um, and because of the uh, lack of um, contact, if you like, uh, it's uh, time control and content control are much more critical. Um, as I say, we're very um, aware that we have, um, we're, we are running a bit slow, um, but hopefully you'll 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 uh, stick with us. Um, the other thing, of course, is that you need to control many more items um, when you are in charge of a um, a Zoom meeting or, or you know whatever one of these collaboration tool meetings. Um, you need to monitor the chat. Um, you need to make sure that your your screen sharing is working. Um, you need to add and ban members, so if, if people are coming in, um, uh, you need to make sure that uh, yeah, the right people come in. If you have some people that are misbehaving, um, pardon me, that uh, you, you can ban them. These all, this all takes away from your, from your presentation and your concentration um, of while you're presenting. And of course, you need to mute and unmute people um, when there's background noise or when people uh, maybe are talking, especially the kids, um, when they start getting too loud, then you need to start uh, muting people. So my uh, key, key point here is to practice. Yeah, practice using the tools, practice your presentation, um, what you're going to say, um, practice. Uh, if you're going to use one of these collaboration tools, practice those as well. Um, so, what does it mean to, to present uh, or to be uh, a speaker uh, on, a, on one of these tools? Some, some things that we need to, to think about. So, mind your background. So, obviously, I've got uh, this lovely um, Starfield background. Um, make sure that your background is appropriate. Um, uh, but also not only your, your visual background, but also your oral background. So other, other sounds that are, that are around the room. So you might hear um, uh, you know, people talking. Uh, if you're in an office situation, you may want to uh, um, make sure that uh, uh, you know, you're in a quiet uh, area because your mics will pick up anything um, that's around you. Uh, another thing uh, that's very important is to try to keep the, the camera, which, which I'm looking at right here, at eye height. So try to have it um, at this height. 
um, a lot of times you'll see people, you know, where, where, where they put the camera down and you're looking up, you're kind of looking up at people. Um, if you're doing a presentation, if you're just joining a meeting, that's fine. If you're doing a presentation, obviously it's not as, uh, not as ideal. Uh, pay attention to lighting. Um, in this room, I have a, a, a light behind me, um, which is which would make my face very dark, so you would not be able to see it. So I have a, as you can see, I will block it off a little bit. You can see that I have a light just over here um, that will highlight my face so that you can actually see my face. It would be better if I could have it a little further around, but uh, constraints means I have to have it off to one side. Um, a lot of people like to look, obviously, when, when, when we present, we want to make eye contact with the people around us. So when we're on Zoom, we obviously want to look at the people that are on the screen over there. But if I'm doing that, I'm not looking at you. I'm actually looking at uh, the screen. So I wouldn't actually be making eye contact with you. So when you're speaking, look at your camera. Make sure that you're... you're, you're your eyes are focused on the camera, that, so you are speaking to your audience. Um, a tip is to move the, um, you know, the picture of the audience just underneath the camera. Then you can look at the people um, and at the camera at the same time. Um, we have seen a lot of videos, um, you know, on YouTube, on 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 Facebook of people that have forgotten that they were on camera. Either they went to the toilet or, you know, they've had inappropriate people walking in the background, things like this, you know. Um, just remember that you're on camera. Assume that you are on camera at all times if you're in a meeting. Um, you know, your camera may not be on mute uh, or, you know, camera may be off or it may not be. So assume that you're on camera um, and then you know, you won't embarrass yourself. Uh, you can, however, on the other hand, you can use on and off camera, uh, uh, the areas on and off camera to your benefit. So, for example, you know, you could have uh, 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 someone sitting next to you uh, that will prompt you or to act as an audience that your on-screen camera or your on-screen audience will not see. You've seen people wearing shorts that uh, didn't quite get this right. Um, you know, they were wearing a nice tie and, and jacket, but then no pants, um, but they got their camera angles wrong. Use, um, you know, if you can have uh, things around you that uh, uh, can make you comfortable if you get nervous, um, that can help you out. Um, like I say, you can have a live audience sitting next to you uh, if that helps you to uh, present uh, more, more easily um, and, and speak more clearly uh, rather than just talking to a camera. Uh, you can have your notes in front of you, um, a, a clock, uh, things like this to, to help you judge the time. So how would I, if I was hosting a meeting, if I was doing a presentation, what setup would I have? Um, make sure that you have all your presentations, um, you know, your, your PowerPoint uh, open beforehand so that when you start sharing, it immediately comes up. Um, you can also, you know, uh, as we learned today, have your Miro or your Mural or your Jamboard all uh, up and running before you start. Uh, and then, yeah, there's no fumbling around and, and, and you know, getting people bored. You could run your presentation um, if you have a, an extra iPad or tablet or phone. Um, you can run your presentation of that um, and uh, uh, free up your screen so that you can see the people. Or you could actually use your, your iPad um, to join the meeting and allow uh, use that as a sort of a, a fold-back TV screen to see what, what uh, participants are seeing making sure that uh, if you're doing a presentation that you're sharing the right presentation, that sort of thing. Um, since time is of the essence, it's always good to have a clock or a timer um, next to your, next to your uh, uh, computer. Um, that means you don't have to look to see, you know, try to find the clock in the bottom uh, corner of your, of your camera. 
of your screen, I should say. If you need paper notes, if you've got notes, have them in front of you. Um, you know, they're, they're off screen. You won't see them. I've got them right here in front of me. Uh, I can look down, occasionally see what I need. However, make sure that you use a big font um, because uh, nobody wants to, you know, see the top of uh, people's heads when you look, uh, bend forward to look at your, your notes. So make sure that you, you're able to see those notes clearly. Um, you know, you can use cue cards or something like that. Uh, try and keep the microphone um, as close to your mouth as possible. I'm using in-ear uh, microphones, so um, you know that that would be better than using the mic that's on on the on the computer. Um, simply, it means you don't have to talk as loud, um, and it also means you have more control over uh, what sounds are being heard. Make sure you have water. Um, if you like me, when you speak, your mouth goes dry. Um, so have water available um, so you can take a drink. Um, Off-site, uh, like I say, off-screen, you can have a fan or have your aircon running, but just make sure that uh, the noise that they make um, is not interfering with the uh, um, with the audio that you're, you're, you know, with your microphones. Um, it's annoying to have that sort of high-pitched wine or even if the, the the fan is blowing it may blow on the mic and cause some wind noise okay let's turn things around and see when you are attending an online meeting um, a lot of people have said you know uh, complained about online meetings and you know oh gosh got to do zoom again what can we do to try to overcome this uh, this sort of this zoom uh, problem. Remember that the context, uh, we have different contexts. In a face-to-face -face meeting, there is a sense of presence. You're in the room with the other people, which means that um, you, you act in a certain way, you behave in a certain way because you are in a group uh, setting. On an online meeting uh, situation, of course, you're, you're not. There's a, there's a, there's a remoteness. Um, and this is why people fall into this trap of wandering around the room with their phone uh, or, or, you know, going to the restroom or uh, 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 trying to do some other things, perhaps play, playing on their, on their phone while they're attempting to, 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 to interact in a meeting. So one way to prevent boredom um, would be basically what I say is to lean into your meeting, and I don't mean physically lean in, but lean in as if you were in a in a physical meeting. Um, act as if you were in a face-to-face -face meeting. So psychologically, put yourself in the room with the people. Um, try to pretend that you are there in the room and the people can see you all the time. To do that, basically keep your video on. You know, don't turn your video off because, as I say, when people see you, uh, they you behave better because people can see you and therefore you pay more attention. Keep your audio on. Again, that stops you from um, uh, being distracted from doing stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Um, sorry. Um, Unless, of course, there's some noise, I need to sneeze or something, then I will mute my, my microphone. Uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, try to keep yourself into the room. And that basically concludes uh, my little section. Um, I just wanted to uh, say before I pass it back to Don that um, uh, we will have um, all of this uh, PowerPoint and the... Um, uh, the video of the uh, meeting on our website, learn.kmp.hk. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can find other information, uh, further information, the videos that uh, KF mentioned. Um, and then we're also going to uh, look into our next event. Um, we're looking at uh, something in January, hopefully, um, talking about intercultural intelligence, ICI, 
which uh, KF will be sharing. Um, we'll be preparing for that, and we'll let you know uh, in due course when that uh, when that happens. So um, that does it for me. I will pass it back to uh, Don, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Andreas. And then, uh, actually, uh, we have to present about the the conferencing tools uh, um, and also some of the other tools that which can be adopted in the virtual event. And throughout the, the presentation or through the sharing, uh, actually some of you have uh, have asked some of the meaningful questions. So uh, maybe Andres and KF, uh, can you share the first question to us? Which question sure. come first and then we, we, yeah, we yeah. All can, 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 can have right. uh, some of our sharing about this? Well, Owen, Owen mentioned uh, a question. He said, how about uh, software security among the tools? Um, what's, the, what's the difference um, between the, the software um, security issues? Can anyone speak to that? Well, AF, can uh, you say? The body we talk about it, I can actually talk a little bit. Um, I uh, I think uh, if for, for my for, for my purpose, most of the time I, I uh, the 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 way I use online tools is I, I don't really care. I mean the, the material I'm talking about is is not really very confidential. So I'm not uh, in most of the cases, people probably won't 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 pay too much attention to a security problem. But I also come across a um, uh, something called a Jitsi, J I T S I, and I'm going to do some experiment on that. And the idea is, it's an open source, uh, open source uh, software which actually you can build your own uh, 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 online tools, like similar to Zoom, and uh, it's free of charge. It's open source, uh, but it of course requires some technical knowledge in order, in order to set it up. And then you can have your company own uh, server to run that. If, if security is, a, is of a big concern to you, that may be one way to look at it. I'm going to do some experiment on it. And then maybe uh, in the future, uh, I can actually also, uh, we can host another event about this as well. Okay, so, um, so what about next questions, Andres? Sorry about that. I was I was struggling to get find my find my the unmute uh, uh, button. Uh, I'm I'm using a, a dual screen system at the moment. My mouse was stuck on the other uh, was stuck on the other uh, screen. Uh, the next question that we had was for you actually, Don. Uh, yeah. Shamina was asking what presentation tools you are using. Ah, okay. Uh, actually, I will make use of the poll everywhere, just to me. Just because uh, uh, I think I have uh, adopted this kind of uh, event interaction tools uh, years before. And then uh, before that, there isn't any slide do or Mentimeter as well. So, uh, but uh, uh, to myself, I think a poll everywhere is not bad. But uh, in terms of the um, friendliness or when you are looking at about their, their appearance or their outlook or about how fancy you can adopt, uh, you, you can attract the participants. I think uh, poll everywhere is not that good. Maybe if you have experience in using the Kahoot, when they are doing some kinds of competition, okay, they will have music, some of uh, energetic music, and to engage the people as well. So uh, Mentimeter is not bad, uh, but I have tried only the, the, the free account. Uh, but uh, for Miro, I have um, I've tried uh, several times. Uh, it's not bad, but uh, you need to have some kinds, uh, some some time for the participants to get familiar with. Just because of the limited of time today, actually we are plan We have planned to do some kinds of demonstration to interact with all of you in this session. But actually, you need to put time for them to get familiar with it first. Okay. 
Yeah, um, Owen just mentioned also his company is uh, required to organize a lot of private business matching to line up buyers and suppliers. So I would say in that case, um, I understand privacy would be would be a major concern there. Um, I would actually look to uh, maybe find another tool um, that has, in that case, maybe some higher security uh, functionality. I mean, um, as I mentioned, you know, if you're if you're on a, a Zoom call, um, you have to be careful what you say, what you do, because you are you are pretty much uh, in the public eye. Um, obviously, you know who is in the meeting and who's not in the meeting, but um, people can be reporting stuff. Um, you know, the, it does say them. It will tell you if a meeting is being recorded. But you know, I can have recording software on my on my uh, computer, and um, you wouldn't necessarily know that. So, if you do need some some you know higher level security, I'm sure uh, there are some uh, uh, higher grade uh, security options out there. Um, but that would be a specialty product. So, um, one thing, uh, Andrew, yeah. when you talk about mm -hmm. recording, uh, if we record, you know, we don't need Zoom to record for us. Each participant, they, they can record their own screen and nobody can stop you. Correct. Yes. 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 yes that's right. Yeah. Yes. Um, no absolute, uh, uh, security. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, I, I have heard of a product quite recently. Um, now, what was it called? Oh, lockdown. It's called lockdown. Mm. Lockdown. Yeah, which is a funny name because you know, 2020. Um, but yes, yes. I, I don't, I'm not quite sure why they named. I think they've been working on it for for uh, several years already. So, but basically, it is an end-to-end -end encrypted um, uh, sharing platform. But both. Uh, sender and recipient need to be online at the same time. So the images or the text that is shared is is never placed on a uh, on the person's computer. They do you you do not save the the image. So I can, for example, I could share a, an image with Don uh, through this system. Um, and it would have Don's name and phone number um, uh, watermarked on it so that if he shares it again, he is basically doxing himself. Uh, but if I no longer want to share that image with Don, I can delete it from my end, um, which means that, you know, uh, nobody, uh, even Don, can no longer share that image. So um, yeah, I mean that's a, that that's the ultimate kind of security um, um, privacy uh, uh, thing. It's called, uh, as I say, lockdown. Um, it's in trial now. You can try it out. I'm not sure what the website is, but I'm sure you can Google it and find it. Hmm. Okay. Um, I have. Um, uh, 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 observe some of the questions uh, or uh, also someone someone uh, asked me uh, asked about the mineral price oh, I yeah. think, uh, uh, to my memory I think uh, 12 US dollar a month which is a consultant pack and then but uh, if you uh, purchase uh, annually there will be some discount as well but actually you can check in the mirror account uh, so that you, you can find more details and then uh, if I have uh, read correctly uh, uh, Shamino has uh, asked me about the continuous paging and digital mm -hmm. whiteboard but actually I think uh, because I'm just using my iPad to, to do the zoom uh, there is some limitation uh, but actually, if you are going to use the desktop to do this kind of presentation, I think that PowerPoint can also allow you to do the digital whiteboard as well. But uh, uh, to me, I'm just using the loadability, which is uh, bought from the iPad loadability. Yep, uh, I will type the name in the chat box later. So, um, 
if I observe correctly, there is no more further questions. But uh, I will encourage you all of you to go to the KMP website to de to to see all those practicality, uh, the practical tips as well. Uh, just two things before we leave. Um, the first thing is, um, yeah, go to check out the, the, the website and then we will um, have, um, yeah, after this event, actually we will open this uh, chat room or the Zoom meeting as well. So uh, all of you, if you want to chit chat or network with other people, uh, actually you feel free to join. And after the, the event today, we will have the uh, survey uh, so that you can give us some of the feedback and then we will send you some of the uh, uh, not, not send you the details, but actually uh, we'll ask you some more details about our next event. Actually, this is the first virtual event by KMP, but actually it is the start, it is the beginning. So yeah, keep going on, uh, stay tuned. Uh, KMP will have a more function or more gathering or more virtual event in the later uh, uh, in the future. Okay, so thanks for joining. So. Uh, Yep. Uh, so, so uh, if you uh, feel free to, to, you can feel free to leave. But uh, actually, you can uh, stay behind to, to to chat with us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, if you guys want to stay on, you can stay on the chat. Uh, continue to chat. And if not, you can leave. Okay. See you. Uh, by the way, one, one reminder. Uh, the chat after we close down the the Zoom meeting, the chat will disappear. So whatever you want to remember, you you have to copy it down. So thank you very much. Right, bye everyone. Bye those that are leaving. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.